smallcapvoice.com. Following is a presentation of smallcapvoice.com, today's leader in investor relations, capital formation, and retail support. Now, with your online business briefing, smallcapvoice.com's Stuart T. Smith. Welcome one, welcome all to this online business briefing brought to you by smallcapvoice.com. And as you just heard, I'm your host, Stuart Smith. And we're joined for the very first time today by Sanu Wave Health Incorporated. The company's traded under the ticker symbol SNWV. And we are joined today by the CEO of the company, Mr. Joseph Chiarelli. Joseph, how are you today? Well, thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to stop by and speak to your company's shareholders as well as our listeners here at smallcapvoice.com. And for those listeners who may not be familiar with the business model there, if you would, describe the business model and market for our listeners today. Sure, Stuart. Sonowave is a shockwave technology company. Our technology is based on proven science, which has been published in a number of medical journals. We have 33 patents, uh, or pending or applied for, and it, they are basically used for wound care, regenerative medicine. We use our technology in other healthcare areas, as well as in other industries. Our patent life is 10 to 25 years, and many of our patents are foundational, so it is very difficult for someone to use a focused shockwave and uh, not violate our patents. We have three devices currently. Uh, our legacy device is called an Ocitron. That was approved in the U.S. for uh, plantar fasciitis, heel, uh, heel pain. Uh, it is also approved for tendonitis and for bone growth. We also have two other newer devices, which are CE marked, meaning they are approved in Europe in Canada and in certain parts of the Far East. Our Dermapaste device, which is used for various skin conditions, including diabetic foot ulcers and pressure sores and burns. And our Orthopaste device, which is uh, approved for muscular skeletal issues, including osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, and bone growth. Currently, we have slightly less than a million dollars in annual revenue from the sale of our devices and the treatment kits uh, in Europe and in the Far East. Well, I want to touch on that a little bit further, if we could, because I'm reviewing information about your company, and I think the listeners may not be familiar. I think we get a lot of information here in the United States about this rapidly expanding diabetic market, but the international market as well is massive. So if you don't mind, touch a little bit about the U.S. and international market opportunities that are presented to your company at this time. Sure. The U.S. market for wound care is north of $5 billion. The international market is even greater. There are, to be honest, I've forgotten the absolute number of diabetics in the U.S. and internationally, but the growth is exponential. It's one of the three fastest growing chronic disease states in the world. The issue for most diabetics is over time you get neuropathy and you uh, get a collapse of your veins and your extremities. What this does for many is to cause uh, amputation as well as open sores that become chronic. There are diabetics who have had open sores for two to six years, uh, and it's not a comfortable process. It, they usually get infected. It creates enormous strain on a person's body. And it is true not only in the U.S., but actually around the world. Our device not only is able to accelerate the regrowth process by sending shock waves, they're not ultrasound waves, and they're not pressure waves, but shock waves that tell the body to basically fill in that space at the epidural and subepidural level. They revascularize, meaning you get new vein growth. And in one of the trials that we have conducted, it appears that we also had some nerve regeneration. So we think we have a way to deal with that. Our devices also are very useful for, I'll call it, working up the leg where they can also be used to help clear 
the, uh, the veins that have been clogged as a result of diabetes and improve circulation throughout the lower extremities. that answer your question? Oh, it sure does, and I do appreciate that, and I do have the figures right here in front of me. 27 million people living with diabetes, 79 million pre-diabetic in the United States alone. Globally, we're talking about 366 million living with diabetes and expected to reach 552 million by 2030. I want to change gears on you just a little bit because you mentioned earlier about non-medical markets. There's some fascinating markets in here. Let's talk a little bit about the non-medical markets briefly. Okay. We have patents which allow the use of the technology in, I'll call it the hydrocarbon industry, uh, which includes not only the ability to extract more oil out of a fracked well, which, as you know, is uh, one of the hottest areas of the uh, oil industry right now. What the technology does is it basically pulverizes rock to allow the oil extraction to be accelerated. We believe it's a 2 to 6% increase in yield on a particular well. More importantly, after talking to people in that industry, we have the ability to, I'll, I'll call it frack water. What that means is to basically apply a shock wave to the effluent that comes out of an oil well, which separates the particulate matter from the fluid itself, and we are working on some working models to demonstrate this to the industry where we believe we can assist them in improving the quality of the water or the fluids that are, that are taken out of a well. By the way, that also can be used for any industrial process. just becomes a matter of how we use our experience and our expertise to adjust the length, duration, and frequency of the waves for whatever the particulate matter is that is residing in that particular type of fluid. Amazing market opportunities right there. I live here in Austin, Texas. We've got a lot of wildcatting that goes on throughout the state. And Oklahoma, I know for a fact, has a lot of problems with fracking. So the technology that you're bringing here and that you're touching on, Joseph, could be disruptive technology. And for those not familiar with that term, listeners, that's a good thing, a way of changing the way business is done in that industry. Well, let's talk a little bit about you, Joseph. You are the Chief Executive Officer of Sanu Wave Health Incorporated. We'd like to learn a little bit about your background, and then the rest of the management team. I uh, had a very rather varied career. I spent 20 years at J.P. Morgan. I am a CPA, MB, CPA MBA by training, so I joined Morgan on the financial side first, was the chief financial officer of two of its subsidiaries, helped run the parent company books for a while. My boss became the head of the securities company, and I wound up in the securities company as an analyst in healthcare, and I was II ranked in both high yield and equities. I then subsequently wound up uh, as the director of healthcare research for a number of other shops outside of J.P. Morgan, and uh, was the chairman of a hospital management company called Clarent Hospital Corporation, which we ultimately put into liquidation. So my experience in healthcare has really spanned about 20 years and has covered quite a number of different aspects of the industry. Uh, I have also run a consulting company, particularly for smaller healthcare companies, helping them in their strategy and their capital raising areas, and have had a parallel career with the Air Force and am a colonel in the Air Force Reserve. And what about some of the team that you've surrounded yourself with? We have really a very experienced team of uh, individuals who have come out of some excellent um, large and small companies. Our uh, CFO, Barry Jenkins, actually is out of ADP. Our chief scientist who runs R&D, Julian uh, Sianta, has his Ph.D. from Duke and has worked with uh, Cordis and DeVascular and Johnson & Johnson. The head of our F, uh, FDA and operations area is Peter Stegagno, who also has a very strong background in the medical device area. And then finally, finally, our clinical manager, Joel Batts, comes to us out of Wright Medical. So everyone has extensive experience in their uh, respective areas. And really, it's a good culture. It's a group of people who are all focused on doing the best that we can 
to increase shareholder value. Well, let's talk a little bit about the efforts then of that management team. Give us kind of the overview from 2012. What did the company achieve to get it where it is today? To talk about 2012, I'm going to roll you back a little bit. Uh, The company decided in 2007 or 2006 to conduct a trial in the U.S. uh, for diabetic foot ulcers and uh, phase three trial which the FDA approved. The trial ran from 2007 through 2010. The, there were 206 patients, and the primary endpoint was to close diabetic foot ulcers 100% at 12 weeks. The result of the trial was to close diabetic foot ulcers 100% at 20 weeks. We only achieved 92% at 12 weeks which did not meet the primary endpoint. As a result, in 2012, the company spent the entire year working with the FDA to design how to meet their standard. Uh, We then agreed to a supplement to that original trial, which uh, will be conducted in 2013. Actually, we'll be starting this trial in the second quarter here. The supplemental trial does not require as many patients, only 90, and we are able to use the results of the first trial to determine success in the second trial via Bayesian statistics. So it was a, I'll call it, retrospective year for the company and resulted, however, in getting the FDA to agree to this phase three trial so that we can move forward in 2013. And how about the goals for the company in 2013? Well, first of all, we, uh, we want to fully enroll this trial uh, so that by somewhere within 2014, we are il- able to go to the FDA for approval, assuming we meet our primary endpoint. We also have the goal to take our other device, uh, the Orthopace, to uh, have the FDA approve it uh, as uh, equivalent to our legacy device, the Ocitron. We've actually filed with the FDA for that and waiting to determine how large trial we'll need to do. We do expect to have that done during the course of 2013. Our goal is also to improve our distribution in Europe and in the Far East, and in that vein we have been talking to a number of players who can expand our revenue streams in both areas. We did recently announce a few weeks ago a new distributor for Australia and New Zealand for the Dermapace machine. So we're fairly confident that our goals in 2013 will move us forward and increase our revenue stream while we wait for FDA approval on our Dermapace device uh, for the U.S. Well, listeners, there's been a lot of great articles written about this company recently. I typically use Yahoo Finance, and if you use Yahoo Finance and type in that ticker symbol SNWV, you can see Acadia Pharmaceutical implies Sanu Wave could triple on new study design. That one came out. Has Smith and Nephew found its next target? Another Seeking Alpha article. So go over that press wire when you get a chance. Once again, we are speaking with Joseph Chiarelli of Sanu Wave Health Incorporated. Joseph, any closing thoughts or comments for the shareholders and listeners? Yes, Stuart, I I think there's two. Number one, the global market for our Dermapace machine is somewhere in the order of $100 to $110 billion. We believe there is a similar market for the Orthopace machine, which deals with the bone and muscular skeletal issues, uh, of about $100 billion dollars particularly when you look at osteoarthritis or osteoporosis or our ability to help accelerate bone growth into such thing as hip implants. So from a market standpoint, we think that there is enormous potential for our technology. The one thing, though, that we do like to caution um, investors on is that we are a, we look at this as a walk crawl run scenario and we do not want our reach to exceed our grasp so although we are doing things in parallel in 2013 meaning looking at our phase 3 device in the US uh, our trial the uh, orthopace approval in the US as well as expanding our distribution networks in Europe and in the far east 
we we are being cautious to make sure that we get this done and we do it right so that when we do get to uh, past all of our approval issues, we have something that our, in, our investors and our shareholders can be very proud of. Well, listeners, if you'd like to learn more about Sanu Wave Health Incorporated, visit that website, sanuwave.com. That's S-A-N-U-W-A-V-E dot com. And you can also reach out to the company's investor relations at 407-792-3333. Well, Joseph, thank you so much for your time, your personal insight into this fascinating technology and business model and market for Sanu Wave Health Incorporated. Thanks, Joseph. And thank you, Stuart. For Joseph Chiarelli, this is Stuart Smith saying thanks so much for listening. Smallcapvoice.com, today's leader in investor relations, capital formation, and retail support, provides its clients with the highest level of service. Our audio interviews are disseminated to one of the largest opt-in audiences available today. How? We at smallcapvoice.com believe in aligning and affiliating ourselves with other leaders within the investor relations community. By sharing resources, each affiliated firm is made that much stronger and each client is served that much better. Our focus is to identify and provide the very best financial services and solutions available to clients and their shareholders. For more information about our services, please call us at 512 267 2430 or visit us on the web at www.smallcapvoice.com.